Hey guys, my name's Rick Barker and welcome to episode number one of Live on the Drive. Uh, basically, this is going to give me an opportunity once again uh, to share my thoughts and feelings with you on my drive into uh, Nashville. I live in Nashville, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville, and I get the opportunity to spend a lot of time on the road. And this is my way of sharing my thoughts and feelings uh, with all of you and learning some cool lessons along the way. I had a video series for a while called 25 Minutes from Nashville that I shared on YouTube, which ended up actually turning into a book uh, called The $150,000 Music Degree, which you can actually uh, pick up for free on my website, rickbarker.com. But with new technology and the opportunity to, uh, to be live and the opportunity to reach more people through Facebook streaming, I thought this is what I would do. So uh, welcome. And I talk about a lot of different things. Those of you, just real quick, if you don't know me, a little bit about my background. Uh, former manager of Superstar Taylor Swift. Uh, currently consult Big Machine Records. Was the uh, social media mentor for American Idol. I uh, still live in Nashville, work in the music business. Have a couple artists that I personally manage. But where I get the biggest thrill these days is I create products to help people uh, reach out and build fan bases and monetize fan bases all over the world. I was able to take my 25 years experience and put it into programs and products to help folks. Uh, I learned that from one of my dear mentors, Brendan Burchard. He wrote a book called The Millionaire Messenger and it was make a difference and make a living sharing your knowledge and experience with others. So that's what I've been doing for the last couple years and I'm also coming up on 25 years sobriety at the taping of this first episode. It is January 10th in 2017 and March 17th uh, is my sobriety birthday. So I share a lot of experiences with the people that I work with from uh, knowing what it's like to be at the very bottom, knowing what it's like to get the crap beat out of you, but also knowing what it's like to come to the realization that I was the one responsible for the crap getting beat out of me, which is what happens for a lot of things. So uh, that's a that's a quick update on what this is and what this is going to be about. But uh, wanted to talk a little bit about what I saw last night on the uh, Clemson and Alabama game, the national championship game that uh, was actually a lot like life. It had its good moments, its bad moments. At times it stunk. At times it was great. At times someone in the relationship was feeling fantastic. And at times someone in the relationship was feeling bad. But this story goes back to last year. Last year, these same two teams met in the national championship and Clemson lost the game by four points. So Clemson could have just waited till they got a chance to play Alabama again to try to uh, get the revenge or to try to make things different. But what they did is they went back and they practiced and they trained and they watched tape and they saw what they did wrong. They saw what they did right. They saw what they needed to work on and they got better. And most people in life don't do that. Most people in life just walk around thinking that things are gonna magically fix themselves. And from experience, I know that's not to be the case. Uh, that happened a lot with my drinking and using. I just thought, hey, you know, just let me stop. It wasn't until I started, you know, working a program that I was able to fix that. Uh, and you never actually completely recover. You're constantly in recovery. And that's one of the things that I had to learn. Uh, last year, one of the things that I really wanted to get better at was my relationship with my son. My son was 11 years old, uh, starting to be that free spirit where he knows everything. And it was a time when I would see him when I'd get home and I would see him on Saturdays briefly before he went out and played with his friends. And I would, you know, see him at church when we'd go to church on Sundays. We had a little bit of time together, but we really didn't know each other. We weren't really spending that kind of time together. So I prayed about it. I thought about it. And I decided last year was my year for Logan and I to really create a bond that I hope and I I'm working towards it being a lifelong bond that Logan really knows who his dad is. I didn't grow up with my dad. Uh, so I started, uh, I arranged my schedule and I created an opportunity for me to be able to coach his soccer teams. And then by the grace of God, 
him and his buddies went and took a golf camp over the summer and now we're golf buddies. So uh, I coach, we would spend a lot of time together. Uh, I was teasing with them yesterday. I'm reading a fantastic book uh, from uh, Brett Miller, W. Brett Miller. And it says, you know, one of the things that he did is he thought about what would people say at his funeral, but most importantly, what would his kids say at his funeral? And that just kind of hit home with me, you know? And, and today I can say, I would love what my kids would be able to say at my funeral. Another issue that I was dealing with is that, uh, I, once again, it was another year of struggle with my weight. You know, I make these bold predictions and promises and all this stuff. Hell, I have a gym in my office and I walk right by it. And I realized that I, I can find excuses why not to take care of myself. And my wife said to me one time, she said, if you gave yourself the same attention that you give your clients, you'd be in fantastic shape and your health would be better. And she was absolutely right. Sometimes you hate to admit that, uh, but she was. So what I did is I sought out a trainer and I you know, work with Jim Cipriani at Next Level Fitness. I go to the gym to see Jim as we kind of laugh about, and I'm now able to see results. Last year I struggled a lot with continuing to run Facebook ads and just throwing money after money after money thinking that I could figure it out on my own when I, real, when I should have practiced what I preach and went out and got an expert, so I did. So I purchased a course to help me out from John Ojaka and I started working with Jesse Doback and Mitch uh, and it really helped this business. So what I did was, is I sat down and realized what are the things that I'm not good at? What are the areas in my life that I continue to make excuses with? And what areas do I need to seek outside help? And that's what I want to encourage you to do. You know, it's like if, if you're an artist that says, you know, I, I can't do the new music business because I don't understand social media, then learn to understand social media or just quit, you know, keep it as a hobby. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. If you are like, you know what, these people are so much better than me at guitar, you know, I'm never going to be as good as them. Practice. You know, just you got to sit down and realize where are your strengths, where are your weaknesses. If you can't fix them yourself, then go find experts who can help you fix those things. If you're not getting enough shows, learn how to book better shows. If you're not uh, you know, building your social media, learn how to build your social media. There's so many different things that you can do, but the one thing that Clemson didn't do is sit there and say, you know what? Oh, darn. We just weren't lucky that day. So well, the next time we play them though, we'll beat them. No, they went and realized what they did wrong and they practiced and they prepared and they got better at it. Nick Saban, Nick Saban is the man for a certain reason. He's going to go back and he's going to figure out what didn't work and he's gonna get down to fixing it. And if he doesn't have the proper people in place that can help him fix it, he's gonna fire them and go find people who can help him fix it. And that's what you need to be able to do. The definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. It's early, it's January 10th. Sit down, start goal setting. Start figuring out what it is that you didn't do well last year and get the tools in order to make this a fantastic year for you. Like I mentioned, you can go pick up a copy of the book that I was blessed to co-write with Wade Sutton. You can grab it from my website, rickbarker.com. There's also a free video series there. Uh, start the conversation below. Let us know in the comments how you're feeling, what's going on in your life. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Where's an area of struggle uh, that you fixed and how did you fix it? This is going to be for all of us. All right, this isn't just about me driving down the road sharing my thoughts. Unfortunately, uh, I can't look and see who's on here or answering questions. At the stop sign, I saw Wade was here, but uh, I'll go back and answer the questions. If anybody has que questions, I'll jump in on the comments. But uh, that's all for now for episode one of Live on the Drive, and I look forward to seeing you in episode number two. Oh, quickly, on a side note, I'm going to be doing... Uh, this a lot and I'm also going to be doing my Facebook live Q&A's in the afternoons. If you want to be uh, notified when I'm doing that, just tap the notification button and you'll get a notification sent to you whenever I'm live. If not, come back. It's always great and I will see you on the next episode. Ciao.